Our night sky is filled with bizarre and seemingly unexplainable wonders. These puzzling objects are composed of equal parts mystery and beauty. In some cases, such as today, their vibrant colours hint of an explosive series of events soon to follow. A spectacular occasion that will light up the galaxy for the briefest of moments before the dust settles and forms the next generation of solar systems. In today's episode, I'm going to be focusing on this peculiar object as I attempt to justify its unique appearance. This is the Dolphin Nebula. I'm Damon Scotting, and these are my astronomical curiosities. Did you see that? Did you see that? So, with the Dolphin Nebula, there is more than meets the eye. This peculiar deep sky object is not something you'll be able to easily observe through an amateur telescope. In order to capture the entire bubble, I needed to take images using narrowband filters, which bring out these faint details. So this huge bubble nebula formed about 70,000 years ago, and it's not because of a supernova explosion. That hasn't happened yet. The reason this beautiful shape has formed in our night sky is because as this star reaches that supernova phase, it is shedding its most outer layers. So when you look at this image of the Dolphin Nebula that I took, the star that steals the spotlight isn't actually our main focus. That star on the right is Omicron Canis Majoris. It's actually about 3,000 light years closer to us than the Dolphin Nebula. But we don't want that to steal the show because that is actually a star in the foreground that is much closer to us and has nothing to do with the fact that there is a dolphin's head in our night sky. So what I'm going to do is remove it from the image, just like that. Tiny bit of Photoshop, got rid of it. So all we're left with now is a star at the center that is known as EZ Canis Majoris. Now this is a very rare type of star. There are only 500 of this special type in our entire galaxy. And that is the Wolf Riot Star. The reason Wolf Riot Stars are so special is because they exist in a brief pre-supernova phase. They are about to explode their guts across our universe. Wolf Riot Stars are amongst the most luminous stars in our night sky. In fact, if we say the star has a luminosity of 1, then on the bolometric luminosity scale, EZ Canis Majoris, the star at the centre, has a luminosity of 620,000 times that of our sun. It really is a gem. It stands out amongst all of the stars. So despite the fact it's really far away, we can still see it fairly bright in our night sky because wolf Wright stars are very special. Does it look very big in that image? The reason I ask is because the size of it is truly baffling. If I say this right here is our sun and that one meter away is Neptune, this is about 30 astronomical units, which means it's 30 times further away than planet Earth is. This is an incredibly vast distance. Well, if I say the distance from the sun to Neptune is one meter, how far do you think the Dolphin Nebula is? Dolphin Nebula is about 126 kilometers from the surface. It stretches out all the way into space. It isn't measured in astronomical units. It is enormous. It's 60 light years across. If you measure our solar system from the sun all the way out to the most distant fragments, the Oort cloud, the Nat just comes close to a light year. To add a bit of context to the Dolphin Nebula, it is only eight degrees south of the brightest star in our night sky, Sirius. But what makes it so special? Why do we perceive this as being unique? Well, it's because humans have one exceptional talent, and it's a talent that has kept us alive today. And that is, we are very good at spotting patterns. They use them as signals for the coming of winter. When that appeared in their night sky, it told them, we need to move on, because it's about to get very cold. They spotted a pattern and thought, this makes a shape. The Greeks went on to tell stories about these patterns in our night sky. They don't actually mean anything. That isn't a hunter cast in our night sky by some mythical god. It's just a random arrangement of stars, much like the Dolphin Nebula is just a random shape. This is a video that I spent all day today making, and it's not very good. I just tried to make a resemblance of what it looks like when this star shedded its most outer layers of hydrogen to form this tremendous shape. The winds were traveling at speeds of 3.8 million miles per hour, which is a ridiculous speed to even imagine. To be honest, I'm ashamed to say how long that took. For a 20 second video, it probably took me five hours to make, and it's not even that scientific accurate. So please make sure you leave a like just as sympathy. Awesome. Beautiful shapes like this occur all across our universe. And it reminds me of a quote from Richard Feynman, 
in which he talks about a discussion he had with his friend who's an artist. I have a friend who's an artist and he's sometimes taken a view which I don't agree with very well. He'll hold up a flower and say, look how beautiful it is, and I'll agree. I, and he says, you see, as I as an artist can see how beautiful this is, but you as a scientist, oh, take this all apart and it becomes dull thing. And I think that he's kind of nutty. First of all, the beauty that he sees is available to other people and to me too. I believe, although I may not be quite as refined as aesthetically as he is, that I can appreciate the beauty of the flower. At the same time, I see much more about the flower than he sees. I could imagine the cells in there, the complicated actions inside, which also have a beauty. I mean, it's not just beauty at this dimension of one centimeter, there's also beauty at a smaller dimension. The inner structure, also the processes, there are all kinds of interesting questions which the science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. It only adds. I don't understand how it subtracts. And I think objects like the Dolphin Nebula, which are inherently beautiful to anyone who lays their eyes upon it, are only added in their beauty when you learn about what is really going on there. How enormous those objects are. How that star is about to go supernova and eject all its mass across our universe, producing a supermassive cloud of dust and gas that will lay the seeds for future generations of stars, future generations of solar systems like our very own. So potentially, there could be a new Earth that results from what's about to happen in that image there. Humans are very good at spotting patterns, and that's why I want to show you right now some of the best images we've ever taken of space. All I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the images one by one, I'm gonna give you three seconds before I reveal what it's actually called, just so you can sit there and think for yourself what that looks like to you. So there we have it, the Dolphin Nebula. Something that is incredibly beautiful on surface level, but only gets more beautiful the more you learn about it. So if you want to carry on seeing stuff like this, then make sure you subscribe. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical. Okay, anything else? Sarah? Stella wins. <laughs> and that star on the right actually looks like the main show. It's stealing the show, effectively. Wait, they're stealing the spotlight. Oh! oh.